Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and it looks like Quant's doing pretty good the last 24 hours. Actually, it's been doing good for the last uh, few days. Seven days, 18.3%. Interesting, coinpaprika.com, one of my sponsors. Now here's another one. I, I showed a little bit of this yesterday. I went down to my, my hunting land and um, the, you know, as you know, ProCoinNews.com is the official sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Hunting and Fishing Club. I'll just show you a second of this. I was baiting one of my stands. I'm out here baiting deer stands. And as you know, I'm at the uh, my hunting and fishing club and ProCoinNews.com is the official. Anyway, you can see my corn there. I got some peanut butter rice bran and I got the corn feeder here. There's a, and then there's a mineral block. Um, and these are the Georgia pines. Those deer love hiding in those pines. Now. ProCoin News also put this out today. Big update from Upholding, who's also one of my official sponsors. Uphold. Polkadot is now a tier three asset, meaning that users can deposit and withdraw through the network. But even better, the next, next to get tier three status is XDC. I own XDC. I don't own Polkadot. I'm not saying that it's bad or anything. But anyway, I'll put a link to Uphold in the top of the description of this video because they are a sponsor and you can click on them and tell them DAI sent you. Um, uh, Bull D app put out a great video. Check this out. But then we introduced the ability not only to message, but actual to settle payments. So that is actually moving funds in 2018 with an add-on service called on-demand liquidity. And the uh, add-on service leverages XRP, a digital asset to move money around the world. And that product has grown tremendously. As soon as we introduced that product and we started gaining momentum, we saw that we saw RippleNet traction go through the roof, which has been really exciting. That value proposition is really moving money around the world a lot faster with less uh, cost in terms of uh, capital costs of pre-funding around the world uh, to grow their business. And, uh, and again, you know, uh, a run rate uh, for RippleNet overall, $15 billion, uh, that, is, uh, that is awesome. I would say like, hey, that is like, you know, better growth than I had expected. Uh, so I'm excited about uh, continuing that. Uh, we're also available, uh, the ODL uh, product, on-demand liquidity product that leverages XRP uh, is available in 23 countries. So you can use our product to pay out to 23 different countries around the world. We're really excited about that. Uh, and again, like, you know, we, uh, uh, we're doing great, especially in emerging markets uh, where there isn't a solution like, uh, uh, like ours. Uh, it solves a real customer pain point. Now, 23 countries, folks. Now check this out. This video was sent to me by Linda P. Jones this weekend. And you got to see this clip, folks. And you got to watch it all the way to the end. Well, ultimately, what I think is going to happen is that this currency crisis that I've spoken about will cause some kind of an event where the system gets reset. Now, whether they write off sovereign debt in that environment, whether they come up with a new currency system like a new Bretton Woods, I really don't know. I think something's going to be forced on on the governments of the world. What, what I think will come next is some sort of uh, government-sponsored stable coin. Um, whether it's Fed coin or what do they call it, the coin now or something. I, you know, I know they, they announced it a month ago. Mm -hmm, yeah. I don't remember the exact name. But I think, uh, you know, the, the genie's kind of out of the bottle uh, with the, with the uh, you know, stable coins and with the Bitcoin and the rise of crypto. Um, I think that the governments of the world are going to adopt what was created in the private market. And use, I, I don't think we're going to go to a Bitcoin standard. I don't think Bitcoin's going to become money. Um, I think governments are going to kind of co-opt uh, that digital asset space for their own. Um, it doesn't mean that digital assets won't still exist and be a store of value or trade as a reserve asset in, in some form or another. Um, but I, I do think that we're going, uh, I, I expect us to continue to have a fiat system. Um, it would be the first time kind of in the history of the world, not totally, but yeah. to a certain extent that, that no government was overseeing the money, right? And it was just a total free market for money. I think that's very highly unlikely. 
Um, I know kind of within the crypto world and within the, the, the digital asset space, DeFi is kind of an important thing. I actually think that the world, this is not what I want, but it's what I say. I think we're going towards a more centralized world rather than a decentralized world. I think power is being consolidated rather than given away. Um, and I think when we get into this uh, sovereign debt crisis, you're going to see even more power consolidated. And when that happens, I do not expect whoever wins that battle, I don't expect them to cede power over the currency to somebody else or certainly not a private market currency. Right. So, so now I have an account at Bank of America. Bank of America has an account with the Fed. The move to a central bank digital cur uh, currency would allow me to have uh, an account with the Fed. Do you think that the commercial banks sort of get cut off on the action? And, and what do you think? You know, the commercial bank system is, is extremely important when people talk about printing money. So uh, do you see you know, how JP Morgan, how do these big banks thrive in an environment yeah. where, you know, everyday people can just interact with the Federal Reserve? Well, so this is an area that I've thought a lot about, and I, I kind of find it really interesting. I haven't come to any conclusions yet, but I think there's a potential battle between the Treasury and the Fed, which sounds impossible because they work so closely together. But if you think about it, the Fed kind of represents the banks. All right. All right. So all right uh, uh oh, had a, a battle. Fantastic interview with Brent. We just were starting to talk about uh, central bank digital currencies and stuff, but there's a fire alarm, so we're going to have to uh, end it there. Brent. He said a battle between the Treasury, Treasury versus the Fed, and then the fire alarm starts to go off. That's an unbelievable clip right there. Okay, I want to show you something. I was going through some old stuff because many of you, if you're new especially, you don't even know what Codius is, but I'm going to show you the history lesson on this in a second, but I wanted to just kind of lay things out for you. This is an old tweet from back around 2018-ish, okay, that I saw. It's XRP, and then it's got Codius. Um, and then... Um, this was an article from May 4th, 2018, the same date that the Ryan Coffey lawsuit was filed against Ripple, okay? Remember, the Ethereum free pass was a month later on June 14th, okay? This article was on June, uh, on May the 4th, same day that the Coffey lawsuit was dropped. Ripple introduces Codius, a new platform for smart contracts for the XRP blockchain. And then there was this tweet from May 3rd, the day before, okay? This is, um, I think it's the day, yeah, the day before the Ryan Coffee lawsuits dropped. Codius has been a long running project that was revived once Interledger was introduced to the cryptoverse. Completion of the beta testing and release of the final platform would definitely be what the cryptoverse needs in terms of secure and fast smart contracts that can communicate with other blockchains using Interledger. This is essentially critical and the current Ethereum smart contracts being proven to have being proven to having security bugs and vulnerabilities. Codius will provide the much needed better and safer alternative. Now what this is from Anders L's channel. Watch this. So uh, my first question is um was Codius created to compete with uh, Ethereum? And uh, how was that? Codius was number four, I mean, no, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know the timing. I will say, so Vitalik, Vitalik slept on Stefan's couch for about six weeks back in like 2013. So Stefan's our CTO. He's our like wonder kid, he's our genius. He's over here with IOP. Um, and Stefan knows Vitalik very well. So um, I think there was a lot of collaboration there between, not like, you know, months of work between the top and the top, but just a lot of mind building. And I don't think it was a coincidence that um, after the top left Ripple, he didn't work for us, but he kind of interned for the world, just kind of hung out. You know, back in 2013, this wasn't very structured, right? It was just kind of a bunch of people in the room. Dream, really. Um, you know, Metallic and Stefan, if I would mind a little bit, they went off and did similar things. So Codius wasn't meant to compete with Ethereum per se, but it was, I think, meant to do similar things. And, and Codius is not dead, by the way. Um, you know, I think we, Codius we, is not we may have some appetite to do some stuff with Codius, uh, but in a much more, I think, you know, defined way of benefit. More defined, like derivatives? So Ripple. This is Susan Athey, board of directors of Ripple and professor at Stanford. It's a platform called Codius, 
And there's another one called Ethereum out there. And both of them are trying to help people write what they call smart contracts or computer programs that distribute money. So like the Codius platform would allow you to write a program and it'll make it easy for people to verify the program works that would say, if these five things happen, then this person gets paid. If these other three things happen, this other person gets paid. So we could just, for example, you know, you could think about uh, some sort of complex financial derivative. We could take an, an, as an input the Bloomberg feed of stock prices and we could make very complex bets about, well, if this stock goes up and this stock goes down and this other thing happens and the National Weather Service says it's sunny today, then this person gets paid. And if these other things happen, someone else gets paid. So that's gonna really reduce the barriers to entry for creating uh, financial derivative products and it's gonna allow more people to hedge more complicated situations where there's not enough people right now to make the market worthwhile to create the asset and have it verified. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, many of you may not remember, but this is Kendra Hill from, and every once in a while I bring her back up. This is someone who d d disappeared off social media. I want to draw your attention to this part down here. The purpose of the XRP is to be used in the derivatives market while also acting as a store of value. XRP is not and was never intended to be a currency, nor was, was it created to be used specifically for cross-border payments. When Codius is released, we will see its true purpose unveiled. Ripple and Stellar are the keys to the new world financial system, which will be ushered in as the old system collapses. Man, it sure feels like things are starting to collapse. And then this was from the official Cool Guy, the Digital Asset Investor channel this weekend. I want to reiterate, this has nothing to do with politics for me or for Mr. Intuitive, the official Cool Guy. This is about facts. Miraculous coincidence, but you have to hear this. The head of the SEC was the chief financial officer of crooked Hillary Clinton's campaign. I said, who is he? He doesn't seem to be very reasonable. It's not even after me. They're after these poor guys. Anyway, point is, there's a lot of there there, folks. Now, speaking of that, this weekend I was fooling around. I was going back, and it's a very curious thing. It's very interesting to me. Uh, CNBC used to, from late 2017 all the way until around May of 2018, they completely understood what XRP was, understood how, how it worked, understood the whole thing. They even had people from Ripple on their show. And, and then somewhere around the time of the Ethereum free pass, it was like a light switch turned off. And all of a sudden, it was like somebody said, you're not allowed to talk about them as a serious contender anymore. This is back on May 30th, 2018. We're seeing customers like Western Union, MoneyGram, they're leaning in and using our tools to solve a, a payments problem. And this payments problem is measured truly in the trillions of dollars. So while we're on kind of, you know, mile marker one of a 26 mile marathon, we're definitely past the starting line. That was Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse on Power Lunch earlier today when I asked him about the future of Ripple and how XRP, the cryptocurrency, could be used. And according to BK, what you just heard Garlinghouse say is the biggest thing investors are missing about Ripple. BK's over at the plasma to break it all down. Hey, Beeps. Hey, Melissa, thanks for that. Yeah, so Brad had some interesting things to say, and I thought it was really important to break down what he's talking about and what the opportunity, at least that Brad sees, and I think you know, ultimately could be the bull case for, uh, for Ripple. So let's break it down. Talking about the size of the payment markets, according to McKinsey, it's about $155 trillion is the size of the market. So your total addressable market is massive. Right now, if you take a look at what it costs to move $155 trillion, it's about $31 billion. Roughly around 20 basis points is what it's costing you. So if using Ripple, and this is from Ripple Stats, you could save about, according to them, about 60%. Well, how do they do that? So you use the Ripple Ledger plus the Ripple currency. And that's the key to this 60% right here. The reason why using the Ripple currency, if people start doing this, is good for is, is the way you save is because right now banks have to hold foreign currency everywhere in the world they're called nostro accounts it's very cost intensive to have that inventory around the world 
they can simply replace that foreign currency with XRP and they can save a lot of money on that. So let's take a look at what Ripple's been doing. Obviously, it's been down. I think we have a chart here. Yep. Obviously, down from the peaks up here, right? The whole crypto market has kind of gone sideways here. But what does Luigi Yamada say? The bigger the base, the higher in space. In my view, you have to have people start using that XRP, that Ripple currency, in substitute for foreign currency. But that's the utility. That's the use case for Ripple, the currency. If that's the case, then that's a pretty nice base right there. Bigger the base, hot. The, if, if there ever was a thumbnail, bigger base, higher space. How about that? Thanks to Brian Kelly from CNBC, who never ever talks about this anymore. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that the bigger the base, the higher the space. I think XRP has been building that base since like January of 2018.